Since we're in London, you would expect that all the names of the streets would be written in English, right? Well, not in Brick Lane. Look at that. Since we were in Bangla town, all the names of the streets were written in English and Bengali. Hi guys, it's your curious and awkward friend Kwasi. Today we're in East London. I'm coming here for you because you know what they say, you haven't really been to London if you haven't been to Brick Lane. And stay tuned until the end of this video if you want to see where can you shop for vintage clothes, where can you find the most delicious food stalls in the market, where can you see cool street art and just understand why everyone is talking about Brick Lane. And if you want to see more fun and informative content from London or other travel related videos, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join the curious gang. Do you know guys why is it called Brick Lane? It's called Brick Lane because there used to be a factory which was producing bricks and they were transporting them through the street all the way to Whitechapel and uh, do you know that this was also a very poor area back at the times. In the beginning, in the 15th century, there were a lot of immigrants, uh, a lot of Jews, French people and later in the 18th century, there were also a lot of immigrants from Bangladesh. Dish. Most importantly, what is Brick Lane famous for? Brick Lane is one of East London's best known spots and for a good reason. It's full of cool shops, buzzing markets and of course a lot of famous curry houses. Whether you're looking for a bit of fashion, food or funky street art, there is something for everybody in Brick Lane. And starting with how can you get here? The nearest tube station to Brick Lane is Outgate East, but also Liverpool Street and Shoreditch High Street Overground are within walking distance. And let me hit you up with a fun fact because we love fun facts on this channel. Brick Lane is often referred to as Bangla Town by Londoners because it has been a major home and community for immigrants from Bangladesh since the late 20th century. And one of the most interesting things I have seen so far is that they have special funeral services, they have their own bank, their flags all around, and uh, it really feels like Chinatown, but for Bangladesh. And I hope you guys are hungry as well, because now we are going to so many different markets. We're going to the Spitafields Market, the Old Spitafields Market, the Up Market, and so many other hidden markets, restaurants and places that I cannot wait to enjoy. And after that, we just had to go to the bagel shop. There are actually two of them, the yellow one where we went and the white one. And there are people debating which one is better. But the only difference between them is that the yellow one sells bacon whereas the white one doesn't and the truth is they're both very good so we just went to the one which had a shorter queue and we got this bagel with salmon and cream cheese and it costed only two pounds 40 what a great bargain and this is the market on the Brick Lane Street itself. It's there every Sunday and it's a mix of uh, food stalls, vintage pieces, secondhand clothes or just some cheaper alternatives. I mean, to be fair, it was just a cool flea market. And the prices in there, both for the food and for the clothes, were definitely lower compared to the clothes markets or from the vintage shops. And now let's go and explore some vintage shops because it's full of them in here. And our first stop was the Backyard Market, which has over 80 stalls that offer some handmade jewelry, unusual clothes, some cool gifts like uh, handmade candles or other vintage items. But I have to tell you from all the vintage stores that we saw in there, this is the one that I like the least, just because it doesn't have such a great choice. What I enjoyed more than the market was this space called Tea Rooms, 
which uh, is packed with vintage clothes, art and even furniture. And inside we also found a writing machine, but it cost 200 pounds, so I'm not sure how worth it it was, but it's definitely a must stop. If you're looking for unique designer pieces, of course, vintage ones like from Fenty, Gucci or Dolce & Gabbana, you should definitely check out the Brick Lane Vintage Market, which actually before becoming an independent store, it was also a stand at the street. Rocket is actually the best known vintage shop, which has both men's and women's clothes, and it also includes some upcycled items. And we just have to talk about the street art in here. Brick Lane is possibly the most famous location in the UK where you can find street art and graffiti. And you guys, how are you finding Brick Lane so far? Do you like it? Are you enjoying it? And most importantly, did you expect that there is such place in London? Let me know in the comments down below. And one of the most popular graffiti pieces is the crane on the Hanbury Street, which is created by a Belgian artist called Roa. Guys, I have a question for you. In which video do I say, hello, Gabiano? Hello, Gabiano. After that, we went to the upmarket, which ended up being my favorite market from all of them because it has over 200 stalls for lifestyle, food and accessories. And you know the drill, every, every food stall is food from a different country and all of them were giving you free samples, which, you know, it's always great. And in terms of prices, it feels like the fixed price in there for a full meal is between 8 and 10 pounds and for a snack it would be around 5 or 6. And Ben had lunch in there from the Lithuanian stove and he had dumplings stuffed with chicken and pork in a mushroom sauce. And guess how much it was? Yes guys, you're right, it was 8 pounds but it was quite a generous portion. That's how it looks from the inside and you know my favorite question is how would you rate it out of 10? I think 9. It's really really good. And it's a lot. And after that we went to Old Peterfields Market which okay technically it's not in Brick Lane but it's very close and I just wanted to show you how does it look. And basically this market it's really old. It's about 350 years old. And surprise, surprise, this has also turned into a food hall nowadays. I'm kind of getting the feeling that these ones are really trendy. And in terms of the prices, it was pretty similar to the other market as well. The snacks go around five pounds and for a main meal, you would expect to pay between eight and 10 pounds. And special attention to this restaurant where you can find dumplings and they have one of the best dumplings in London. And I had lunch at this Sri Lankan kitchen and I had kotu roti, which are basically diced roti, which after that are stirred fried with scrambled egg, onion, chili and I don't know, lots of veggies and spices and it was an interesting combination. You guys, this is a little bit spicy, but it looks like that. And you guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what do you think about Brick Lane and I will see you in this next video. Love you all. Bye.